So in the last video, the, the cloud bowl video, which I'll, I'll put a link to it up over here somewhere. <laughs> um, I, I really wanted to play with the differences between time lapse and stop motion and, and sort of mi mixing those two things together. So, so it's sort of a blurry, a blurry area between the two. So, so, I, so the way I see it, time lapse is where you you keep the time between when you take a frame for the video even but the motion within the frame isn't controlled so you end up with something that's a little more sporadic looking and and less controlled and and for the most part sped up but but not not with smooth smooth motion in it whereas stop motion you control the motion within the frame, between each frame, but the time that goes by between taking each frame is random. So, you, so that part of the production you don't see, but what you do see is a much smoother, much, much more fluid motion. So in, in doing that, I wanted to be in the frame, so it would sort of look like a time lapse, but it would actually be stop motion, where I'm moving within the frame and I'm controlling that movement, but I'm also controlling when the camera's taking a photo or a frame. So what I needed to make was a way to use my remote camera trigger in a way that didn't use my hands. And so what I thought I would do is make something where I could fire this with my foot. That would let me do the things that I need to do in the scene and control the camera at the same time. <laughs> so what I made is a foot control for my camera shutter release. What I came up with was to do two halves that would hinge together and sort of sandwich the trigger release between the two halves so I could click it with my foot. I cut out a little pocket for the remote switch on the CNC. And this really could have been done without the CNC machine, but it felt like the thing to do. Although it, it took a lot of fitting to get it to be snug within the, within the pocket. So once those were cut, I could then cut out each of the two halves from the bigger piece. Watching this now, I'm wondering why I didn't cut out the two pieces on the CNC as well. Because all of this lining up and then cutting the outside of the pieces to be flush with each other could have been avoided if I'd just done it all on the CNC. But I had it in my head that I would only cut the pockets with the router and then do the rest of it on the table saw and the radio arm saw. So I got them flush and I marked one end and I added a hinge at that end. So I cut a little bit of a dado to take up the space for the hinge. I had a little piece of piano hinge left over that I could use. So I attached that in the little slot of the rabbit. Now to actually push the button on the remote, I put a screw in the opposite side that would fall right, right on the button. So as you push the top piece of plywood, it'll push the button on the trigger. Now I did add a stop or a piece of wood to the bottom half of the two pieces of plywood to keep the screw from pushing too hard on the button. If there was no stop there, I would break the button with my foot. It worked fine, but the little spring in the button was being used to hold up the entire top half of the piece of plywood. So I added two pieces of foam sort of as, as springs to hold the top piece of plywood up. So the button would only be pressed when you're putting force on it with your, with your foot. And the spring in the button doesn't have to lift that top piece of plywood back up again. So you can see how it goes together. The, the remote goes inside and then it gets folded shut and it makes a foot pedal. So I can take photos as I'm doing something with both hands. It's kind of funny because I got into a little dance sort of to shoot the camera because you have to press the trigger fairly hard. But you don't see this so much in the final shot because it's only taking a still at the point that you're pressing the, the foot pedal.
Thanks for watching.